Hello everyone and welcome to the Baselick School DCF website. This website is intended to be your one-stop shop for everything DCF. So if you need any help, guidance or support, this website will hopefully contain whatever you're looking for. Now the first thing that I'd like you to do ideally, and this is to make sure that you've always got access to this content so that you're not ever searching on the shared area or anything like that for the information that you need, what I'd like you to do is click on the bookmark icon here, name the site DCF and press done. And that way, whenever you open Google Chrome, you know that you can always get access to this information. And I think that's really, really important. So what I'm going to do now is give you a basic breakdown of the different sections of the site and the information which is contained within each section. So the first section is what is the DCF? And this is the home page. Now, there's some Welsh government videos here which explain the different strands of the DCF. And there's also a useful link here to a video which shows you how the online framework tool works. Now, this is a really useful tool because you can filter the DCF framework into different strands, different year groups, and different elements within each strand. And it also gives you some classroom task ideas for individual subject areas. So that's a really useful tool to have a little look at. So the next section that we're going to look at is the digital work policy. So if I click on the digital work policy tab, I have introduced the digital work policy to directors of standards and leaders of skills. And hopefully this has been filtered back in DLEs and fed back to all staff. But if you do need to catch up on what the digital work policy is, it's basically ensuring that we are making sure that our standards are the same across the school, trying to ensure real consistency with any kind of digital work that goes on in the school. So for example, we ensure that presentations are the same, or at least they have the same sort of success criteria across every subject in school. And if you need more information about the digital work policy, you simply click on this button here and it will open up the digital work policy and you can browse through the different sections here. So that's a really useful one to have a look at. And if you're unsure from reading it, there are two videos here explaining what the digital work policy is and how to use the digital work policy to help you embed the DCF in your subject. So now we're going to look at the next section, which is templates. So if I click on that tab, now templates have been introduced to directors of standards and to leaders of skills. So hopefully this has been filtered back now through DLEs to all members of staff. But if you are unfamiliar with templates, they're a really quick and easy way to ensure that we give the correct success criteria for di using digital tools and consistent guidance and support. So I'll show you a quick example basically once you create a template or you create a document from a template essentially all of the information the guidance and tutorials are here and the success criteria is automatically here all you need to do then is fill in your subject specific content in these sections now there's a video here explaining how to actually use them so and how to create them so if you click on that link you'll be able to see exactly how to do it and it's very quick and easy but extremely useful now we're going to be looking at the exemplar work section so if i click on the tab here it takes you to this page with a document and the purpose of this document if i click on this link is to show you examples of digital work that's going on across the school now this is a nice thing to have because you may be thinking when you start receiving the presentations, for example, off your pupils, what should I be expecting? What sort of standard should I be looking for? Well, if you, if we stay with the example of presentations, click on this link. There's examples here from different members of staff across different subjects 
for different year groups. And you can simply click on one of the links. Let's say, for example, I click here. I can see here an example of a good presentation which meets the success criteria. So all presentations are different, but the point is the standard that we can see sort of will give you an idea of what you should be expecting from your pupils in your classes. So now we're going to be looking at the tutorial section. So if you click on that tab there, essentially, this is just good CPD. You're developing your skills across a range of software and tools that we use with the pupils across the school. But I think what's really useful with this is that it enables us to help the pupils more effectively. So let's say, for example, you knew you were going to be using Google Forms with one of your classes or a collection of classes. And you thought, right, I want to make sure that I'm really clued up before we go into this and I can help pupils if there's any issues. So all you need to do is click on the Google Forms link there and you can click on tutorial one and you just work your way through these short In this video, videos. we're going to be looking at and it's as simple as that. So the tutorial's really good for developing your skills to be able to help the pupils and give yourself some, you know, some good CPD. So now we're going to be looking at information which is more specific to individual areas of learning. So if we click on this tab here, what I've done is I've taken guidance and information that Welsh Government have provided about the new curriculum and they've essentially provided information of how to effectively embed skills in individual areas of learning. So let's say, for example, we click on humanities. I've linked it specifically to section five, which is designing your curriculum. Um, and essentially, it just gives you some good ideas and suggestions of how to embed skills and the type of thing that you should be thinking of when creating your schemes of work. So that's a useful thing there for um, specific areas of learning to get a bit of more targeted information. So now we're going to be looking at the digital learning zone. So if I click on this tab here, the digital learning zone is for pupils. It's a place where they can get guidance and support with using digital tools, but also to get an understanding of why they're developing their digital, uh, their digital skills. So essentially this was on Google Classroom, but I think there was a lot of confusion and I, I can see why in that I was asking staff to encourage pupils to go to the digital learning zone, but a lot of the pupils weren't members of the digital learning zone classroom. And because staff weren't on there, themselves it was difficult to actually understand maybe what the digital learning zone was so this is simply here to for, there's a link to the digital learning zone so that you can see what the pupils see when they access it so if they do ever require support or guidance you can prompt them to go to the digital learning zone and this will actually be part of the school website in the in the future so pupils should know where this is and how to access the help that they need. But I think it's useful for staff to be able to sort of see this themselves to know what the pupils can expect. So finally, we've got the feedback section. So if I click on this tab here, all this is is a Google form, which when you click on the feedback button, you can give me any feedback, suggestions, and ideas. Anything that you want to say about the DCF, or if you've got inquiries about a task that you'd like to, that you, you're thinking of carrying out with your classes, but you just want some guidance or some information, this is the best way to do it. The reason for this is, is that when obviously we receive in a lot of emails, sometimes you, I can lose track and maybe miss things. So by doing this, I get a notification every time somebody posts some feedback and I can keep track of it all together. And I know then which ones I've actioned and which ones I need to action. So any kind of suggestions, feedback or ideas are completely welcome, but if they could be done through this 
this format, that would be absolutely fantastic. So that is the DCF website. I hope this will be useful to you. And hopefully if you do pin it to your, um, your web browser, that will make it a life a lot easier for accessing this. And as I say, if you do have anything that you want to say or ask, please go to the feedback section, put it into that Google form, and I'll be able to keep track of it and get back to you.